One of the great things about Green Signals is we get to do and see some absolutely amazing stuff. But I think today could be the coolest thing of all. I've come to UK Rail Leasing's depot here in Leicester, and in one of the grey sheds behind me is GB Rail Freight's brand new Class 99 locomotive. This is a real game changer. Able to produce 8,000 horsepower when operating in electric mode, and 2,400 horsepower from the V16 Cummins engine when in diesel mode, the Class 99 is the most powerful standalone locomotive built so far for Britain's railway. But before we look into the detail of the Class 99 and get a tour around the locomotive and the cab, it's worth taking a very short trip down memory lane, because to understand how we got to this point, we need to recall the once proud British industry that not only built locomotives for our own use, but exported them around the world. In 200 years, we've come a long way in terms of the development of the train. There have been moments when technological innovations meant we've jumped forward in a massive leap rather than small steps. Britain has often led the world. Stevenson's rocket was one such moment. Sir Nigel Gresley's A4 Pacifics were another. One of them, number 4468 Mallard, still holds the world steam locomotive speed record set in 1938. The English Electric Deltic. The Intercity 125 high speed train. All big leaps forward. Freight locomotives, not so much. The Class 66, imported from US company EMD, may be a common sight on Britain's railways, and they have proved a really smart purchase. But first introduced in 1998, not only are they advancing in years, changes to emissions regulations forced EMD to cease production some time ago. No more 66s. In the rush to decarbonise, lumbering great diesels are no longer fashionable anyway. And whilst everyone knows an electric railway is a better railway, the failure of successive governments to commit to a long-term steady programme of putting wires up... The green bars show the UK electrification volumes. And you can see the drought that Sir Andrew referred to. The red line reflects German levels of electrification over a similar 30-year period. What is currently fashionable are batteries. And although the rate of development is impressive, there are still concerns over cost, range, complexity and disposal. So GB Rail Freight, a company known for being a serious and successful disruptor, has chosen a different path. And wow, what a result. Bob Tiller is a career railwayman and celebrates 50 years service in 2026. He has literally seen it all. As the former engineering director of GB Rail Freight, he has been the driving force behind these astonishing locomotives. I asked Bob, what inspired GB Rail Freight to opt for the Class 99? We were looking, we knew that we had growth. We knew we wanted to grow the business. Uh, we knew that there weren't going to be any 66s to buy anymore. We had to go somewhere else. And we also had an eye to the future. We knew decarbonisation was coming. So when I first saw a Eurojoule, <clears throat> I walked through it, understood the concept, uh, met one of the engineers in the cab. And I thought, we could do with some of these in the UK. Had a chat with him went to a bar, had a beer, had another chat with him, flew to uh, Stadel in Valencia, uh, had a talk about the concept of bringing one to the UK, how we could do it. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way, yeah. as it did for everything. But eventually we signed the manufacturing supply agreement in 2023. And here we are with uh, 30 class 99s. And why, I asked Bob, did the option of batteries not appeal? If you produce something with a battery in it, I don't want to talk about our competitors, but if you had a tri-mode, for example, which was very complicated, which had a set of batteries in it, which is a boost to an engine, which only lasts 10 minutes, which you can only charge under the wire, which you can only do so much with, your operations become uh, risky. So the battery only lasts 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 it? minutes. And you've got to have something which is simple. The raw numbers on the Class 99 are breathtaking. This is a locomotive that has 8,000 horsepower on tap when operating in electric mode. It has 2,400 horsepower when in diesel mode. And although that's a lower headline figure than a Class 66, Bob explained why with this locomotive, it doesn't matter. 75 miles an hour, is that, is that it? Can, are you restricted to that or? No, it, goes, it can go up to 100 miles an hour. It can go up to 100 miles an hour. 
how? how do you have, what do you have to change to do that? So <clears throat> all we have to do is change the dampers on the bogies and a software change. That's it, that's a software it. change. That's it, done, a software change. And what's interesting about this, it's a Coco yep. configuration. I've seen another Stadler Loco that's also relatively new and quite complex. That's a Bobo. Why, why go for this particular configuration? Laws of physics. Okay. What you need is something called tractive effort, TE. All right. And that's all about the grip between the rail head and the wheel. That's what gets you away on a train. It's the grip, it's the power, how you put the power from this locomotive through that wheel onto the railhead. That's called tractive effort. When you have a Coco against a Bobo, Coco is longer. It has more weight defined on its bogies across a larger scale. You're allowed to put that TE over a greater number of wheels onto a greater area of track. So a 66 is 3,250 horsepower. The difference is the attractive F is that, that traction control package. Bob explains how the technology available today for a class 99 compares to that used by a stalwart of British Rail's heavy haul freight locomotive fleet of the 80s and 90s, the class 56. Class 56, for example, when you pull away, they suffer from wheel lift. So they'll, they'll do this. They actually will lift on the bogey and the weight will come off the wheel and the wheel will spin. So you're not getting that full attractive effort onto that wheel and it was never controlled. So the loco would just wheel spin, wheel spin, shut off, open up, shut off, open up, and away you go. Things got better. 66 is a lot better, but it's not individually controlled. You've got a Doppler radar on the front, but it's not individually controlled on each individual axle to the extent that this is. So this one, when you pull away, every single one of those wheels is connected to each other through the computer. Looking at the Class 99, it's hard not to get the impression that this is a seriously complex bit of kit, with the ability to run electric and switch to diesel and back on the move, plus all that fancy power electronics to maximise tractive effort. Not so, says Bob. The vision of the Class 99 was to keep it as simple and as tried and tested as possible. And it's worked. I took something from Germany, Eurojoule, yeah. right? turned it into a UK example, taking all that risk away because we knew it already worked. So the only major difference between a Eurojoule and this is the engine, different engine. Otherwise, if you went into a, a HVLE or, or a HHPI Eurojoule, it'd look like this. Okay. Very, very similar. I mean, obviously this is, you know, got British, uh, UK standard stuff on sure, it. Sure, and it's a UK loading UK gauge. UK loading gauge, everything else. Right. But essentially, it's the same bogies, yeah. it's the same traction motors, same wheel set, same transformer, same converters. Let's just say someone from America would have come along with a completely new design yeah. with all the risks that entails. Yeah. And they would probably want an order for 100, 150 units. There are innovations on this locomotive, however, particularly when it comes to what we used to in the UK. Some are small, but no less brilliant. A lot of people have mentioned the... Um... Your, your, your sandbox. <laughs> I mean... I nice to at, know how much sand you've got in there, isn't it? Well, I look at that and I go, I can't believe we didn't think to do that before. Was that your idea? Uh, no, it's Stadler's idea. <laughs> it's Stadler's idea, okay. That's very generous of you. And then there's the coupling camera, complete with its own windscreen wiper. Windscreen washer fluid. Easily accessible. And you need that because you've got, obviously, a big wiper with, the, with cleaning. We've also got your uh, coupling camera as well. And that's got a washer and a wiper. Which has its own, washer, its own washer, and washer and wiper system. Diesel, of course, is unfashionable in 2025. It's not considered at all cool to burn hydrocarbons. So to ensure Miss Thunberg doesn't get upset, the Class 99 has a party trick, and it's called HVO, hydro-treated vegetable oil. This, um, this fuel tank, which holds 3,000 litres, is full of HVO. We can run it on diesel if you want to. And being stage five emissions, it's su you know, super clean. But HVO, it's even cleaner. Yeah. This saves about 58% carbon reduction. One of the challenges is that GB Rail Freight operate a substantial fleet of Class 66 locomotives and will be doing so for years to come. No problem, according to Bob. We've thought of that. And the other one, the bigger one, is the AAR, which is the American Railroad one 
which connects to a 66, a 67, a 73.9 or anything else with an AAR coupling. So this can run in multiple with a 66? Yes. Uh, is there so any... You can drive it from the 66. You can drive it from yeah, the 66. Yeah, all this. I mean, that's going to give you so much operational flexibility, isn't it? That's the idea. One aspect of the Class 66 that has attracted criticism over the years, certainly the early years, is the cab. It can be noisy and drafty and hot. And having been in a fair few over the last 20 years, I can confirm this is the case. So, time to have a good look around the place the drivers of these remarkable locomotives will call their office. The cab. It's fantastic. I can't get over how much you can see. Yeah. I, I did think, I did wonder when I was stood outside that, that these pillars might be a bit obtrusive, they're but, not, they're, they? but they're not at no, all. No, not at all. You know, and even when you've got that, if you're driving a 66 or, or yeah. an earlier type of locomotive where you're almost in the windscreen, down, yeah. you, you know, you can look down. You just want to look down, just look in you your screen. Looking, yeah, cameras. And if it's dirty, put the windscreen on prime, so it'll clean the camera. Everything. <laughs> I find that's absolutely superb. I love that. Yeah. I'm guessing that it is. It's a cup holder. It's a cup holder. Yep. One on each side. One on each side, yeah. So you can have your your latte and you can have your... Flat white. You have your flat white. That's yep. fantastic. And it does work because I've tried it out. <laughs> it does fit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does that's fit. brilliant. Yeah. Three, got... three pin socket, if you've got anything yeah. that's three pin. Yeah. Um, engine start, stop controls are over here. Yeah. Um, pan up, pan down, yeah. horn, emergency brake. Yeah. Uh, your throttle and your brake, regenerative brake here. Your straight uh, train brake, if you if you need it. Because obviously most of the time you'd be working regen. Yes. Uh, your locomotive brake. Yeah. Parking brake. Uh, speedometer there. Uh, some nice little clips for holding on your. your I paperwork. wondered what they were. I thought, is that a fancy rest for a screen? And it's not. It's just no, a it's very, just a clever, very clever. Very clever clip. <laughs> it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, your TCMS screen. Yeah. Uh, which you can it gives you loads of information. Yeah. On your. Um, and is where you can have your cameras. And your cameras yeah. and everything else. Yeah. And funnily enough. I can look at this on my laptop. What, uh, what remotely or just? Yeah. Wow, you can. So using uh, Hasla's EVA cloud, iCloud, yeah. all right? You can so dial into the this, this sends signals yeah. at predetermined points, goes up into the cloud, and I go to my laptop, and I look at my page, and I can see what the engine's doing, I can see what the traction motors are doing, I can see what the driver's doing, I can see what that's doing, yeah. I can check my temperatures of my engine, I can check my levels. I mean, it's basically F1 telemetry, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to go that far. <laughs> I mean, oh, being a big brilliant. Williams fan, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to... It's, um, I, I would say that uh, it, in terms of, yes, in terms of railway, yeah. yes. Yeah. There's just some lovely touches here. Because this, I did, I mean, this must be a Swiss thing. The horns here, there's a little treble clef <laughs> For the upper tone, yeah, and a bass clef for the lower tone. I mean, it, I, how that's just so wonderfully musical. I love that. It's superb. <laughs> you need to keep your staff. You need to keep them engaged. This is their office. Yeah, you know, same as we go to work in office. This is their office. Yeah. So why not give them an office that actually they're pleased to go to work in? And you can do just little touches. Yeah. So, what, where's the light switch for the cab? I don't know. I, hopefully, so you think it'd be here, wouldn't you? It's somewhere where it's easy for the driver to yeah. get to. That little button there. But that's great. So they're coming in through the door. No, even before they've come in the drive, right. there's one of these down there by the steps. Oh, that's brilliant. So even before they come to loco, they just tap that. Yeah. All the lights come on. Everything yeah. comes on. They okay. come in here. They can put the cab lights on. And they go in the engine room. All the lights are on. Everything. Fantastic. No that's switch, no nothing. They just touch it. Really cool. I'd come to Leicester assuming this locomotive was going to be primarily for the intermodal or container market. But listening to Bob explain what this locomotive can do has made me rethink that. Bob again. Undoubtedly, it lends itself to intermodal. Yeah. Because you've got the routes where there's more electrical pantograph supply um, and where you probably wouldn't see it, for example, is in, Port in uh, Portsmouth, Chichester uh, or Hastings. You would never go there it, because th there's no pantograph. The southern third rail it's not built for that area felix stowe hams hall manchester traffic park london gateway doncaster those will undoubtedly be the routes um down the, the east the greater anglia main line north london line willsden acton great western main line west coast east coast but anywhere east and west even 
So if you were going across the Pennines, if you were going uh, middle and main line, if you were aggregates, if you were cement, if you were stone, if you were steel, if you were a nice dining train, does everyone. 113 tons, axle weight 18.3 tons, class 66, 126 tons. Lighter and traction motors are AC, lighter wheel sets, less damage to the railhead. Bob has worked on these locomotives from the very beginning to get to this point. We talked about the journey he's been on. I had a boss John, in John Smith who believed in the product and believed what I said and back to me and he's been tremendous for the business and tremendous for UK Freight. So firstly, I say thank you to John because without him, we wouldn't have done it. But also for me to get this here is a tremendous achievement and I am very, very proud. I'm proud of my colleagues who've helped me people in Beacon, but also in GB Rail Freight and Stadler have been fantastic. I've never had such a good working relationship with a builder or manufacturer than I have with Stadler. They're fantastic. And the quality of the build speaks for itself. It is absolutely superb. Summing up a locomotive like the Class 99 is hard because there's nothing quite like it. It's completely countercultural. Whilst the rest of the rail industry seems to be hell-bent on an immersive love affair with the battery, and all the complexity that brings. GB Rail Freight have gone, nah, we're gonna do something different. The Class 99 is properly anti-establishment. It's a disruptor. The personality of the company's CEO, John Smith, shines through. But John Smith doesn't do things for effect. He does them for a purpose, usually a very successful commercial one. And you can be sure that running a profitable business is first and foremost in everyone's mind at GB Rail Freight with this locomotive. I have a tinge of sadness though as I look around this wonderful locomotive. All those iconic locomotives of the past were built here, in Britain. The A4, conceived in Britain and built in Britain. Same for the Deltic, same for the high-speed train. All British designed, all British built, but the factories in which they were built really no more now than a distant memory. It's therefore a shame that to get hold of something as amazing as the Class 99, GB Rail Freight had to go to a Swiss company and buy a locomotive that they've built in Spain. Don't get me wrong, Stadler are a world-class company and this is a world-class product. They should feel immensely proud of what they've built here. It's wonderful. But I can't help feeling sad that in the country that gave railways to the world and whose workshops once exported locomotives across the world, in 2025, when we celebrate 200 years of the railway, we couldn't get even close to building anything like this now. Still, a British company has had the vision to buy this and it's here. So well done to GB Rail Freight, to Beacon Rail for financing it, to Stadler for building it. Thank heavens for all of them. And as for the Class 99 itself, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that not only is this a massive leap forward as a locomotive, it may just be the thing that saves rail freight in this country. If there's ever a top trumps for railway locomotives, everyone is going to want the GB Rail Freight Class 99. Because one thing's for certain, nothing has a higher cool rating. <laughs>